Okay, so now let's focus on the lab setup using Intel Aero Raised to Fly drone as an example. So, included in the box is the drone already assembled, a remote, and not included is a USB hub, USB OTG cable, and HDMI cable, and you will need that for flashing. Uh, battery on battery charger for flight if you want to fly or a power adapter a wall power adapter for desk development so you have the references for all the cables on the wiki so here's what a typical lab setup would look like for development you have the drone on the right connected to a power supply uh, it's better than relying on a battery all day then you have a USB hub for the keyboard, the mouse, and the USB key for booting. And it's also connected directly to the HDMI screen. There is a HDMI output on the drone itself. So uh, for calibration on remote control of the drone, you have a software called Cubone Control running on a tablet or a computer or PC. It can be Linux, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, anything. Uh, if it's portable, you can bring it with you later when you plan to fly. So perhaps it's better to have a tablet than a computer. You will probably have a development computer to prepare the USB key, um, to run software, uh, you run your code editor if you want to, so we'll cover that later. So here's a flashing procedure. Uh, first you will download a large ISO file, you will create a bootable USB uh, key from this ISO file on your development station and you'll flash first the operating system called Linux Yocto on the board itself then from this Linux Yocto you will flash the BIOS then you will flash the firmware for the flight controller and the FPGA layout so keep in mind that flashing is not an option. This is really important to do because the version that is coming with the drone from the factory is rather old and you want the new version with all the new features and bug fixes. So please, first thing, you flash and you update everything. You have all the details on the GitHub uh, page, so please consult that. So first, when you boot, you would press the S key to enter the BIOS. Then you would go in the boot manager to boot from the USB key. The USB key has a menu with install and boot, so you will select install. It will wipe the disk of Aero and reinstall Yocto from scratch. Flashing may take a few minutes, depending on your USB key uh, speed. At the end of the flashing procedure, it will reboot automatically. Go through the BIOS and enter the menu of the disk. So you will see that this time we are booting from the disk of Aero, not from the key. So you have only one option in the menu called boot. You have nothing to do. It will be selected by default and it will boot to the graphical terminal. We will then proceed to the BIOS by launching the command that you see on the screen called Aero BIOS update and you can reboot your drone.
This time, instead of just going to group, you will see a lot of messages on screen on top of the Intel Aero banner on that the BIOS being upgraded. It won't take long and it will reboot. You can run the Aero get version uh, script to see if you upgrade it correctly. Here it's written 1.6, so we are good to go. So the next video is recorded from my laptop, but that's exactly the same thing as running it on the drone itself. So you go to ETC Aero FC. You have the choice between RD Pilot and PX4. By default, we work with PX4. And you can run the command AROFC update with the name of the firmware. So it will run a loop trying different uh, boat speed for the serial port, and at some point it will find the right one and manage to start flashing. It may take a while, don't worry. Try again if it doesn't work the first time, it will work. Okay, so it's over now. It says rebooting, but it's only the flight controller that is rebooting. Now let's focus on the FPGA. We go to the folder etc FPGA, and we see there is one jam file for the read to fly drone and one for the compute board. So depending on what you use, pick the right one. Today we are using the read to fly drone. Very simple. Jam a program rrtf.jam and it's flashing. Okay, it's over now. We can run the version script to check that everything is in order. So after you flash everything and specifically the flight controller, you will need to recalibrate the flight controller. To do that, you will use a software called Qgon Control running on your computer or tablet, third party uh, computer. And at the end of the calibration procedure, you should be able to arm the motors without the propellers, we are just trying to arm them to spin the motors and it will prove that everything is connected correctly. So for details about this calibration procedure, please refer to the initial setup page. And uh, the next step would be to have a first flight if you have a battery and if you can fly safely around you. So at the end of this uh, tutorial, we saw that we have a working lab setup with all the cables connected. We flashed all the components. Everything is upgraded. We recalibrated the flight controller and sensors. We made our first flight, or at least we had the motors spin for the first time to check that everything works from hand to hand. We are now ready to open a terminal and start coding.